What is up, everyone? Welcome to Content Creators. Today, we have Kim Adversario. Kim, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? You know, can't complain. Skipping work right now. So I, I want to start from the kind of the beginning. What brought you to ASU in the first place and kind of what are you pursuing during your time here? Well, I'm from Arizona. So I Arizona State was one of the schools that I always just went to, like with high school trips and stuff like that. So it was already kind of ingrained into what I was going to anyways. I came to ASU as a community health major on like the nursing path. That was just because like my parents really wanted me to be a nurse. And then I just decided that that's not really what I wanted to do in the first place. So I decided to switch my major to political science. And then I also did a lot of other stuff that added on. Like I added a history major as well. And then I did have a business minor drop that had a Spanish minor. I'm probably going to drop that. And I was thinking about adding like an Asian studies minor, but it's really just a bunch of little weird things that go on the way. But eventually I do want to be a lawyer. And so that's kind of why I'm like really interested in things like this, but I'm more into actually just learning what's going on. I kind of wanted to get your your input on kind of the entire world right now with the, the current Black Lives Matter movement, with the way people have reacted to it, whether that's positive or negative. What do you make of the entire situation? I think it's really just like not up to me, like what my opinions are as a non-Black person. I don't think any non-Black person has the authority to have an opinion on what's going on because this is like an uprising. This is like something that's been happening for like years, like centuries. And for people in the non-Black community to like be, what's it called? Hesitant to like follow in the Black people's like footsteps and like being revolutionaries and doing all these stuff. It's kind of just weird to me to watch people just sit back because it's something that we've like as non-Black people, we've allowed it to happen, especially like white people who have allowed this to happen for their benefit. And I think this is re- like a really good time for people to reflect, especially during a pandemic, just to sit back and actually take the time to think about what they're doing and think about how they're going to go on further when they have all the information at their footstep. It's just something that is so beyond you as a person. So I think that's why I've been really vocal about it because I've just been, I was like on my feed, my Instagram, my Instagram and my Twitter are totally two different worlds. And so on Instagram, it's like people I know in real life, people I have been like in contact with at least like through a distance from like where the spaces I've been in, like at ASU or if it's like my hometown and things like that. And to see people just kind of just constantly just post pictures, like ran, like nothing's going on. Like people aren't, out here fighting for their literal lives. It was just kind of weird for me to be quiet as well when I know that there's something to be done. Like my Twitter is like full of people, just like activists who are talking out about this or just people with a lot of opinions, you know? And so it's, I just wanted to bridge that gap because these are people in my circles and for me to just not do anything about it is kind of making me also complicit in the whole, just like the silence of it all. Right, and I wanted to talk about ASU. How do you feel ASU has kind of had handled this situation, whether that's Dr. Crow's letter, I guess is a good word for it, or from what organizations have been doing? How do you feel about the entire response? I think every response was too late. I understand that responding to things might take time just to fill a whole like a letter and to draft it and make sure all the wording is right. But even after a couple days, I mean, the Black African Coalition already said that that whole letter from President Crow was just like terrible like it didn't really address anything in the first place and I think that's what is kind of I guess like a met not a metaphor but like it kind of just shows you what ASU has been doing or how most institutions do respond to like the issues like this it's more of a like a show kind of just saying like yes we support you but there's nothing that's actually being done if that makes sense like even if every club decided to put out a statement if every organization in Greek life put out a statement it doesn't really mean that they're any they're doing anything about it it's just the times are like the pressure is so on them that they just need to say something but it doesn't really necessarily mean that there's like like an actual thing that's going on behind it. So that's part of why I was thought I was like really mad because I do follow a lot of organizations on Instagram as well. So seeing like the statements that they had said 
But knowing how they are in real life or just knowing the effects of what other people have told me, it was kind of, it was just ironic that things, like things were being said that haven't been done. And obviously I can't speak for Black people, but after like hearing what their experiences are and like the circles that we share, it's, it's not a good thing to like, it's not a good thing to compare like their experiences and like what the organizations are actually putting like out. And so let's kind of go in with your experience as a non-Black person of color in Greek life. I guess what brought you to that that circle in the first place? And then kind of how's that journey been? I went through recruitment my second year. So my first year, I kind of really didn't know anything about ASU as much as I wanted to, I guess. I was kind of focused on being friends with people, just being friends with people in the first place. And I'm more of a shyer person, I would say. Like I, like in person, like it takes me a long time to kind of adjust and be comfortable with people. So in a setting like Greek life where you are just thrown into like 100, 200 people, the expectation there is like, you're going to be friends with everyone. So for me, it was kind of like an opportunity to branch out. And since I did have that major switch, I was on downtown and now I was on Tempe. It was like, I needed that because I didn't have a freshman year on Tempe campus. Like I needed to just have friends like automatically, or at least just people to start pushing me into different groups so I can find myself on campus. As a non black person, person of color it was it's not necessary I don't think I've personally felt any like racism or things like that but it's just uncomfy sometimes like you are very hyper aware that that you are like one of the five people of color in a room like you're just hyper aware of like everyone around you being white and I think that kind of that kind of mentality going to Greek life is kind of weird just because I went to a really conservative high school as well like everyone that was there was white but like all the minorities like ended up being friends together everyone else it was kind of just like a group like you didn't have to look out for those minority friends but as as how high school went it was like you just gravitated towards people who have the same experiences as you as you and in college that was a lot harder just because it's so huge and I didn't want to be someone who was like I'm just going to hang out with all the people who are exactly like me or I'm going to like do this and like I didn't want to attach myself to necessarily like one group but when I was when I did go into Greek life it was kind of there are so many different groups but they are like all intertwined I would say so I kind of like that and then my sorority is also super big on like female empowerment and that's something I I love and I'm like really about so it wasn't hard for me to just choose them or like for them like the that whole exchange to happen but it is just really weird I would say to be a person who is not like doesn't look like everyone else and then also with like the whole Instagram thing it's like most of the pe- people who follow me or if I followed from ASU are in Greek life so of course I'm just gonna see a lot of people that post from there and I think when this whole thing happened like over a week ago it was still like when I said earlier like it's a little weird that everyone was still going on like nothing happened and then people if they even said anything or spoke out it was just like a cutesy little Instagram post it didn't say much but it said enough to like say that you are in like solidarity I guess was the movement and I think that is it wasn't helpful for me to just be mad it Like I needed to actually provide the resources, but I mean, no matter what I can do, it's like you, it's on someone else's accord to just to follow through with like the reading and the watching and all of that stuff. But I just need, like, I needed to be vocal about it just because I am aware that I'm in white spaces. And so I have to make sure that I'm not, I'm not portraying myself also as a white person because I'm not. And like this movement doesn't affect me as much as like, obviously this movement is for black people, but I understand the racial tones of it. And I understand that aspect, but not like systemically. So for me, it was a lot easier for that transition to being like so hard, like hardcore behind it, just because I understand what what it means to be a person of color. So like, it was it's just like a weird situation to be in when you're not white, I guess. So Kim, I want to take it back to the movement and some of the, some of the the policies and some of the initiatives that have kind of come out of it. And I want to talk about the quotes eight can't wait policy. For those who are currently listening and they may not know too much about it, would you be able to kind of fill them in and why you personally feel like it it might not be enough? 